Right, from Steinways and St John Smith Square to uneven temperament. Yes. Um, we have here in East Grinstead a keen proponent of it in David Pinegar at Hammerwood. Um, we're going to do this in two stages because we've got the news coming up in just a minute. So possibly could you give an introduction to uneven temperament? And then for those of you, I mean, I'm going to let Adolfo talk right up to the uh, news. And then after that, we're going to play the same e flat uh, nocturne that we played at the very start of the program, but it will be un in uneven temperament. So can you have a go at explaining it in two minutes and ten seconds? Yeah, it, uh, it's not easy in a, such a short time, but it was... Uh, really a revelation in my life to to have the opportunity through david to know uh, unequal temperament because i i didn't know a lot about about it but uh, on the top of it what i knew was actually wrong was was not the 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 real thing uh, basically it's a tuning a uh, tuning that was uh, used at, at the time of uh, chopin and liszt and uh, for some reason uh, has gone to be lost uh, during these two centuries but uh, it's very interesting because um, I could make uh, an example it's like uh, um, we say in Italian the the palette of a painter uh, the possibility to to match colors and um, Tuning the piano uh, in an equal temperament, not respecting, in, in, in this case, the equal distance between all the 12 semitones between two notes that are, um, are an octave, basically is creating um, a sort of possibility between all the harmonies matching together that is given uh, to the music a warmth, a, a color, a, a sp expression, the possibility to express different feeling and different moods. That's very good. Um, and so, so, so what, what you hear is you don't hear each note at the per perfect distance from every other note, but there may be slight variations around it. Yeah, absolutely. It's impossible to, to understand uh, like a computer but the final result, it's really, should be that. Good. And coming up in just after the news, we're going to hear the E-flat nocturne played on a piano that is, that is, unequally, uh, is of an unequal temperament or tuning. Thank you. 
Welcome back to the second, of our, second hour of Classical Meridian with me, St. John Brown, with my guest, international concert pianist Adolfo Barabino. That was uh, Chopin's Nocturne in E-flat, Opus 9, Number 2, the same as we started the first hour of the program with, but this time it was played on a piano that was tuned with an unequal temperament. Um, Adolfo, you say it was a, it was a Bechstein. Yes, this piano was a Bechstein, a no, very old one, actually. Yes, um, I, I do have to say that if I had to make a choice, and this is me being old-fashioned or you know, fuddy-duddy, I'll take your, um, I'll take your Steinway with your on, on your Claudia recording any time over that. <laughs> However, I know that I, I know that it's one all in the studio because Adolfo is a great fan of uneven temperament, and I, if David Pinegar is listening, I know that David would beat me over the head for not being so enthusiastic. Um, what we're going to do now is we're going to we're going to play another piece, aren't we? We're going to play the first of the Bach Preludes and Fugues from Forty Eight, the first one in C major, which is which is in fact we all learn this and it's all helping us to do sort of you know um, intervals of a third and intervals of a fifth. Um, do you think this particular piece illustrates the virtues of uneven, unequal temperament very well? Uh, yes, because all of the pieces played in unequal temperament can can have uh, this. Uh, advantage um, to be more expressive because um, I could experience uh, on my piano uh, that I play every day for hours and uh, I recently tune in unequal temperament and uh, my piano is a modern Stanway and uh, sometimes meanwhile I'm practicing and performing one piece I really enjoy surprises because uh, it's uh, the piece itself that is surprising me with this uh, slightly new solution and uh, 
uh, it's very difficult to explain in words all these uh, kind of uh, concepts, but uh, you can imagine to see a beautiful photograph in black and white, and then suddenly to have the possibility to to watch this photograph in colors. Uh, and actually is the feeling that uh, that I sometimes, uh, uh, especially in, in, in certain moment, I, I feel when from when I have uh, my piano tuned in an equal temperament. I, I think you're making a very good point there because, mm. because I, I think part of the problem, because mo most of my exposure has been mm. at Hammerwood with David Pinegar's mm. very venerable um, Beckstein. Yes, um, and and I I think his Beckstein has probably seen better days, and so I'd be very interested in hearing it done on a sort of modern, up to date style. Yeah, way. it's uh, um, we don't have absolutely to confuse the matter with an old piano. Also, uh, this uh, this nocturne was played in not David's piano, but uh, old Beckstein, and actually it 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 was not in good condition. So. Uh, we don't have to confuse uh, the quality of the piano and th the kind of tuning because this uh, might be really not fair. <laughs> that's, I think that's very fair. And, and the, the Bach prelude we're about to hear, that's played on the same old Bechstein, is it? Uh, yes. Yes, okay. So here it is, the, 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 the very first prelude that starts off Bach's 48. First of Bach's Preludes and Fugues, the one in C major, played by Adolfo Barabino um, on a piano of unequal temperament. Um, we have a, an email in from Stefano Ferretti, who says, Dear Maestro Barabino, your playing is really impressive. Is your technique due to hard work or to a wise choice of the out attitude of the hand on the keyboard? I mean, is there any secret to reach such a quality, especially performing fast arpeggios, or does that just come from hard work? Um, it's a, a quite complicated answer because, uh, um, of course, it would be very easy to say uh, it's a hard work, uh, hours and hours uh, making exercise on the keyboard. But actually, it's a bit like uh, we have to, to clean our shoes every day for being elegant, but can't be the sense of our life. 
So it's existing a basic work on the keyboard with scale and arpeggios and trills and octaves and whatever we need. But uh, for me it's very important and it was mm, by luck my starting point um, to have always a stronger connection with, with the, th the sound. Um, I try to explain a bit better. For playing fast we need uh, a good movement, for playing music we need uh, movements. But uh, many, many students approach this movement just from the mechanical aspect. Instead, for me, it's absolutely important that uh, we reach the sound through the movi movement. So we, have, we must have an idea of the sound that we want that we desire, and consequently, we, we, we learn a movement. So for me, it's really important not really to, to make exercise, but to control what I'm doing, controlling the sound. I think that's a very good answer, because, because I think those of us who aren't terribly talented, we tend to spend a lot of time focusing on the mechanics and forgetting that at the end of it, it really is all about the sound you make, isn't it? Yeah, the, the starting point, the basic point, is the composer didn't want to create something difficult for generation of students. They wanted to play, to compose music. And uh, my very starting point, when I was a child, um, I received actually my first piano lesson when, when I was quite old. I was almost 11, but I played before um, by ear, by heart, and the only thing that I could get from my father's records was a sound. So I just tried to reproduce the sound and not to... Nobody taught me uh, scales or movement or something like that. So when, uh, of course, after uh, the, 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 the starting point with my piano teacher, I, I started seriously to, to study, I didn't lose this uh, connection with the sound. And so um, this is my, my way, this is my believing. That's very interesting. Um, 